Good morning and welcome to our benefits conference here in Wetumpka, Alabama. I'm David Hillier. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Local Government Health Insurance Board and I wanted to welcome each and every one of you to our first conference of the season. I'm sorry that I cannot be present for the conference today, but I'm currently in Washington, D.C. Uh, at a Blue Cross Customer Advisory Board meeting learning about some of the great programs that Blue Cross has in store for its partners. So while I'm excited to be in Washington with Blue Cross at the time, I really would love to be with you all today in Wetumpka. I truly enjoy our three conferences. I tell Michelle all the time that that is my favorite time of the year is our what I call our conference season. So uh, appreciate everybody being here today. I'm thankful to the city of Wetumpka and to Mayor Willis for hosting us again this year. This is a great facility. We've come to love the facility. We have our biggest conference of the year each year in Wetumpka. So we are excited to be back this year as well. I wanted to thank each of our partners for attending again this year. I believe this will probably be the largest conference in terms of vendors that we have participating that we've ever had. So we're excited that, that all our vendors and partners took time and the expense to come down and join us today and to be able to help you all understand a little bit more about the programs that we offer through those partners. And I'm truly appreciative of the time that you are spending with us today. And really that's what you're doing. You are spending your time with us because it comes at a cost to you. There are some things that you're not going to be able to do today that you would have normally done, and you're going to have to find some time to do when you get back to your office. So we appreciate you taking the time uh, to come and spend your day with us. And as you can tell from the large number of our team members that are present today, you can see that I place a great emphasis on these conferences. It's a great time for us to get to know you a little bit better. And sometimes we may be rekindling old friendships or making new friends or putting a face to a name that we talk with on the phone. These are really important times for you to get to know us a little bit better and for us to get to know you better as well. It is truly an honor to serve you and your units and your employees and to provide the health insurance benefits for those employees. And it's a, a, it's a thing that we take very, very seriously and we're extremely thankful for that opportunity. And last, but certainly not least, I want to thank Michelle and her team for putting on yet another great conference. Um, anybody who's ever orchestrated one of these conferences understands the great time that has to be invested into doing these and making them uh, be done correctly. And Michelle and her team just does a fantastic job. Uh, they're fun, they're informative. Uh, people continue to come back year after year, which really says something for Michelle and her team. And uh, I'm very, very thankful for that. So for my time today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the things I spoke with our board about last month at its board meeting. Each year, I discuss what our top goals are for the year with the board. And so I wanted to go over our 2024 top goals, how we address those, and then what we're looking at as our top goals for 2025. So for 2024, we broke out our top goals into four buckets. And the first bucket was innovation. And this is really part of our mission. You know, part of our mission is to provide you know, innovation that will improve the health and well-being of our, of our members. And so, you know, we want to be an innovative group. We want to bring new programs to our members that can help them improve their health. We want to be innovative in how we deal with our, our units, with you all. New systems and processes that can make things easier uh, and more efficient. So in 2024, some of our things that we did on the innovative front to address that top goal was we're continuing to work on our benefit administration system upgrade. It's going to be called Benefit Focus, and Rob Robison will talk a little bit more about that later in the day. Also, we implemented several new programs uh, that will impact the health and well-being of our members. One is Hinge Health. It's a musculoskeletal program, uh, physical therapy program that has really made some great impacts on our members uh, so far this year, and, and we really think that it will continue to, to prove to be very valuable. Also, uh, and Jason Graham will talk a little bit more about this later today, is our YMCA partnership. We have partnered with the Alabama Alliance of YMCAs 
to allow any of our members to join the YMCA for free. If your unit wants to negotiate a lower rate with the YMCA, they may be able to do that. So we're excited about that innovation that we're able to offer our members. And Jessica O'Donnell will talk a little bit more about this later today, but an, an employee assistance program, that is something that we consistently hear from units that, that is needed. So we're excited to be able to be in the final stages of offering uh, an employee assistance program. Then we've also added a Southland voluntary cancer policy. It's a policy that uh, our sister agency, the State Employees Insurance Board offers, and it's very popular with their members. And we think it'll be very popular and useful with our membership as well. And then some of the things that we've done on the innovative front in regard to our systems and processes is Meg McCutcheson, who is our program integrity director, has done a fantastic job in innovating how we deal with some of the processes and procedures of enrollments. And through her new processes and procedures, we've been able to get that average enrollment time to one day. So when a document comes in, on average, that is being worked in one day. So that is a fantastic, uh, innovative uh, project that, that Meg has been able to achieve with enrollments. And then the second bucket was communication. Uh, we wanted to really increase our level of communication with our members and our units. We wanted to make sure our members understood who we were, who the various players are in the health insurance uh, space, and, and making sure our units understand who we are and trying to be easy to do business with. When I talked to our team about this, uh, Michelle really took this and ran with it, and she has done a fantastic job on increasing our communication levels. We are now providing regular emails to our units with pertinent information uh, on a weekly basis. We're increasing our focus on our local government team knowledge. We're trying to increase our knowledge holistically across our team members so we'll be more efficient in how we really serve our units and our members. And then, of course, we survey our units and our members on a uh, yearly basis. And Michelle has done a fantastic job of looking at those responses to those surveys and really trying to pinpoint communications into those pain point areas that have been identified through those surveys. And then the third bucket of our top goal for 2024 is education. And that's really closely aligned to the communication bucket as well. But we wanted to make sure our units and our members were educated about our benefits and our programs uh, that we offer. And so some of the things that we have done in 2024 to meet that goal is Michelle has worked very closely with Blue Cross to develop a new member handbook. And that's a handbook that went out to everybody who is a member of our plan and will continue to go out to new members. And it lists in a more easily understandable and identifiable manner what our programs are, what our high level benefits are. Uh, you know, and it's, it's a lot easier to digest and to understand than that 100 page benefit book that uh, everybody is uh, used to seeing. So that has been a great addition to our communication and education effort. Also, we're starting to send out text messages to specific members that may qualify for some of our programs, which is a great way to continue to educate them on those programs. New units, we're sending those new units, uh, new member boxes that has pertinent information, uh, you know, high level information about our benefits, contact information about who they need to contact within our team for, uh, for various questions. It's just another way for us to be able to, to serve our units better. Michelle has started the local Pulse newsletter, which is a quarterly newsletter that goes out to all our units. And it's got really good information about things that are going on with our board and our programs at that time of the year. She's also started a podcast called Covered Conversations. Uh, and it's a way that she's able to interview a lot of our partners and vendors and uh, some of our team members that talk about some of their responsibilities here at the board. So I'm sure she'll talk a little bit more about that, but it's just another way to be transparent and to provide greater education and communication. And also we're increasing our presence at the county commission meetings, uh, the league of municipality meetings, the city county management association meetings in an effort to be able to 
really reach out to our city and county administrators, uh, city county count, council members, and be able to, to get to know them a little bit better and understand their needs. And then the last bucket for 2024 was motivation. Of course, you, you create programs that will impact the health and well-being of our members. You communicate and educate our members on those programs, but you also want to motivate our members to use those programs and benefits. Our benefit plan is here to be used. It is not here just to say we've got great benefits and we hope you never use them. We want our members and our units to be educated so they know what our benefits are and they know how to access those benefits. And so that was a great uh, top goal for 2024 as well. And one way we, we met that goal was we really increased our presence at health fairs and screenings. Marie James, our clinical manager and her team, really went out and, and supported those screenings uh, more than we have in the past. And that has shown great results as our uh, 2024 or 2025 uh, screening year has just completed. And we had a record number and record percentage of people who were screened. We are now at 89.21%. So that is a fantastic number. M Marie and her team do a fantastic job on supporting those entities during that time. And it's another way for our, our members who have been identified to be at risk for a certain condition that those screenings test for to know what the programs are that we have to offer that can impact those, uh, those conditions. And then also, you know, our white glove customer service is uh, something that we have bought into as a organization. It's something that we preach on a weekly basis. It's something that we recognize at our monthly staff meetings. And it's really the cornerstone and foundation of the service that we provide. So that is something that is always going to be a top goal for us. And as we look at some top goals for 2025, you know, I was, I was thinking about this a few months ago and I was thinking to myself, why would a unit choose to join local government? Or why would an existing unit be satisfied with us or would recommend us to a sister uh, county or a sister municipality? And in my mind, it boils down to really one essential business objective, and that is value creation. So, for 2025, our top goal is continuing to create value within our organization and our benefit structure. And there's a couple of different entities that you can create value with. First is internal stakeholders. That's, of course, our local government team. And we place great emphasis on continuing to create value within our organization. So uh, we, we are definitely mindful of that in 2025. But more applicable to you all today is our, are our external stakeholders. And that's members, uh, our units, our partners, whether it's Blue Cross or Prime Therapeutics or United Healthcare or Verta or Wonder. Uh, we want to really continue to create value with those stakeholders. And there's two way, main ways that you can create value. The first is through financial value. And that's easier to identify, it's easier to quantify, it's, it can be measured. Um, and the, I've listed a few ways that we are focusing on trying to create value is number one, our rates. Uh, you know, the affordability and, and our low rates. Um, you know, the board approves uh, various programs throughout the year that we'll talk about today. And those programs aren't just things that we throw out there and, and, and hope that people uh, find some value in. They are really uh, returning value to the plan by number one, they are addressing the, the health and well-being of our members, but they're also uh, reducing our costs because our members are, uh, their health issues are being addressed. Um, and also by the way that our internal team at local government is managing the program. We are putting in processes and procedures in regard to benefit structure that really are impacting our rates and that are uh, really improving the benefits that we offer to our, to our members. And then another way to create financial value is our rate predictability. Our board has done a fantastic job of being consistent in our rate uh, increases on a yearly basis 
predictable, uh, consistent, stable, or some of the terms that we use a lot about that. And that, that really does create value for you all who are needing to, to number one, you know, have very good benefits, but also having very affordable be benefits and, and the, uh, a rate that you can somewhat predict and it's consistent year over year. Third and fourth way to create financial value is by adding programs and, and really those programs are at, uh, at zero dollar member cost. So that is creating value to our members uh, by, by reducing the cost of their health insurance. So, you know, some of these programs like Teladoc, Hinge Health, Verta, Wonder, Baby Yourself, they're all wonderful programs that will really impact the health of our members and they're also zero dollars. They cost the member nothing. So that's a great way that we're able to uh, continue to create value. And this is just some of the things that we've done in the past. We're looking on a daily basis, different ways to be able to create financial value for our, for our members and our units. And the second way that we're gonna look at creating value for our members and our units in 2025 is perceived value. And this is kind of like, why do you go to Costco instead of Sam's? Well, there's something at Sam's or Costco that makes me want to go there over the other one. And, you know, that can be subjective to each, uh, to each different person. It's difficult to gauge, um, and, and it varies from person to person. You really can't put a finger on why you like Costco versus, versus Sam's. You know, the first two are I'm kind of going to group together. We want to be easy to do business with. We want to uh, be more efficient in our administration. And some of the things we've done in the past, like I've mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, is Meg and the way that she has really made our enrollment process more efficient uh, and, and we're easier to do business with. And so we're going to continue to work on those areas and increase uh, that perceived value by being easy to do business with and being efficient in the way that we administer our plan. And then also, we want to increase our technology. Like I mentioned earlier, we're uh, in the middle of incorporating a new benefit administration system. Uh, and then, you know, even our IT department on a, on a daily basis is working on different ways to be able to make uh, our plan more valuable. One great example of that that we've done in the past is by the and I call it the cancel button, the online cancellation selection, where if a member or one of your employees uh, leaves service, you can get that information to us sooner. We can get that person canceled. And so that it reduces, you know, headaches and friction later down the road. So uh, that is something that our IT department, Craig Tucker and, and Michelle Walden, worked very closely on. And that is something that's been great. And we're looking at doing more things like that. And then last, under perceived value, it really boils down to why do you go to Costco versus Sam's? It's because maybe they give me the best customer service. And that is something that we have at the forefront uh, of our organization on a daily basis. And you'll continue to see us provide that white glove customer service. So thank you all for being here today. Thank you for giving me a little bit of your time. I'm excited uh, what's in store for you all today. Once again, I'm sorry that I can't be there, but I'll be at the Gadsden and the Spanish Fort conferences, and, uh, and hopefully I'll be able to stop by one of your locations here soon. I'm on, uh, I've been in the past going and visiting various units. I've had to draw that back a little bit for the last few months because of various board meetings uh, that I had to prepare for, but I look forward to getting out on the road again and coming by and seeing you all, but hope you all have a great day. Thank you.